Well, they blew up all the chickens in Bonanza last night. Now they burned down the jobs board, too. Down at the showdown, they're getting ready for a fight. Gonna see what them merchant boys can do. Now there's trouble busting in from CBS. And Jonathan Cars can't get no relief. Gonna be a rumble by the microwave And the town council's hanging on by the skin of their teeth Well now everyone cries, baby, that's a fact But everyone that cries chugs their root beer back Put your gold star on, put your bandana pretty And meet me at Kid Nation in Bonanza City Howdy, folks. Welcome back to Kid Nation Nation, the only Kid Nation podcast exclusively by adults, for kids, for adults, by adults, for kids, by adults, for kids, by adults. At least west of the Mississippi. Yeah. Um, this episode, honestly, grinded my gears in multiple ways. Yeah. we. I mean, usually we, we scream and laugh really loud and sometimes even clap and stand up during, while watching Kid Nation. But this one, we, were, we, we probably woke up the neighbors. Um, because we were having such frustrated sex by waking and up by neighbors. That we mean we were just wh- frustrated. We didn't have sex. We mm-hmm. just were frustrated. Well, sometimes I refer to us having sex as watching Kid Nation. Oh my god, stop! Um, this no, this episode was really kind of annoying in some ways, but annoying in a good way, in like a good reality TV way. Like everyone was sucking this episode, and, and it makes sense because this episode, which is called "Not Even Close to Fair," was full of unfair shit happening. Yeah, well, it actually started off very lighthearted and promising with uh, Michael doing this strange, like, sex appeal comment. Zan Bales think the gold star will significantly increase their sex appeal. What? More games? Oh, yeah! yeah. Oh, yeah! yeah. It, it was a weird opening of the show because it, it, it felt like one of those throwaway clips that they show after the credits. I mean, honestly, as like if I I channeled back to being like a fourteen year old girl, and I was like, "This is flirting." Yeah, this is hot. So, so Michael is hanging out with a bunch of green uh, team kids who all have gold stars. Yeah, and he says, "Hey, does having a gold star increase your sex appeal?" It was just said really confidently, and like I was like, "Why?" But sorry, what were you gonna say? I was just saying, like, when I was in elementary school, like, saying sex would like elicit just crazy laughs. I mean, it's a swear. It so. basically is a swear. But they. In the midst, that's just like a bunch of gold or green people. Well, they call themselves the, the gold, gold team, team because the, the Goldsteins because. <laughs> hey, baby, I'm on the gold team because they've. I mean, it's a lot of them. I think they listed at some point in the episode. It's like five, four or five people at this point. So it really feels like an inside job and not very fair either. Yeah, they're like the uh, the, the Chicago Bulls of the yeah Bonanza City. So we're learning a little bit about some quirky characters. Nathan is. Back in the saloon, cleaning jars. Olivia's like, you've cleaned those already. And he's like, I swear I did not. And Yeah, he, he still has undiagnosed OCD uh, t- 10 days after we last saw him in Bonanza City. Yeah, and so we kind of get like a little snippet of like everyone kind of getting on each other's nerves slash being their weird selves. And then it's time for the journal. And the journal is basically like, hmm, let's mix things up, shall we? Yeah, it's just like we're, we're going to do redistricting. We're Literally. Do, but like not really because it turns out to only be like trading one person. <laughs> it, it turns out you can just not do what the journal says. And yeah. So 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 nine episodes in, Laurel, one of the town council members for Team Green, she's just like, I like my team. We're perfect. I'm not going to take a kid. Yeah. They're all like talking about who they want to trade and everyone wants to trade people for various reasons. Andre's like, well, I want like Emily because I'm going to make her a better player we see little snippets of Emily, who, if you remember her from the chicken saving episode, she was the chicken advocate. Mm-hmm. We see Markel, our f- best dressed kid, kid of the nation. He's like, Emily is lazy as dick. She's on the red team with us. And honestly, Emily sucks. Hey, Emily, can you help me get water for the laundry? Nope. Well, why not? Yes. I'm not gonna. Emily drives me crazy. She's just lazy and she just doesn't really care about the red district. Emily's like, I hate the red district. <laughs> she hates the red district. She's really talking shit. And I don't blame her. I hate the red district, so 
Who cares? So every team, every council leader has a reason why they want to trade someone. Like Guylan's like, I want someone smart on the red team. So I want Nathan. And we, we, you and I both look like, wait, wait, what? what? <laughs> <laughs> like he obsessively cleans women's underwear <laughs> on a washboard, but he's not like what I would call smart. Right. I mean, I like Anjay's method of like, well, our team's strong. So let's make this weak little dumpling baby stronger i was like that's kind of cute but, but but he says something earlier before that he's like he, at first before he says he wants emily he's like i want taylor because it'll make me look good because if i can convert taylor to being a good worker no he says he wants someone like taylor status and they're like well do you want taylor he's like no i want emily oh. he was just using taylor like someone that you couldn't think would do good work and then they were like, well, Taylor? And he's like, well, no, not like, not, I meant like Taylor, not Taylor. It's, it's such a weird strategy. It's like if a sports team is drafting someone and but he was, instead of wanting the best player available, they're like, I want someone who's really shitty and will make me, the coach, look good. I mean, he basically, Taylor wasn't going to do better. Like, yeah. I think Emily just didn't really like her team. And if she got into a good team that's already being like, number one every week anyway she's like yeah this is fine you guys want me to wash a dish every once in a while yeah and but, spoiler alert she washes a dish <laughs> for once uh but i mean mike or not mike uh guylin and anjay are basically just picking like last pick rounds first with no first pick rounds and then yellow is like we're really weak and little so we want blaine obviously yeah 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 but yellow team was the only one that made a smart decision i was like oh hey let's grab someone who's really strong and a nice kid Mm -hmm. and who everybody likes so we're watching this weird meeting and both pablo and i were like are they only trading because it wasn't clear at first when they were journaling like this whole trade like mix up districts because mixing up districts i don't know if i was on the town council and which is something i think about night and day Mm -hmm. I'd be like, okay, all of us need to switch half of our team. Like, I'm going to keep half of the people I really want on my team, and the other half need to go to a different team. Yeah. Simple as that. And then they should have drafted. They should have traded. Like, well, I have this person. How about I give you two of these munchkins for one of these yeah. medium-sized kids? A draft would have been really interesting. They could, yeah, they could do trades, or at the very least, just do a complete random reshuffling so we can get some new drama, new storylines. Fresh, fresh interactions. But instead, what happens is, so Nathan goes to red, Emily goes to blue, Blaine goes to yellow, but nobody Go, goes to green. Yeah, green's like, we're perfect. We're not changing. Everyone will be mad. And truly, I can't believe the council. If if I was a another council person, I'd be like, then none of us are changing. Yeah. Like, what's the point? Well, all three council members besides Laurel knew she was going to do that. So why didn't they just all pick someone from the green team? Nobody from the green team got picked. They could have taken, you know, I know. No, it was, I don't I don't know. So it's time for the meeting <sighs> after this weird meeting. And they say all the things that we just discussed. Hey, we're switching a few people. So Emily, come on down to blue. And, you know, Nathan, I guess you're going to red. Oh, and Blaine's going to yellow. And Greg, I mean, you know, Greg doesn't take kindly to not getting his way. Yeah. I hate you, Zach. Greg and Blaine just automatically clicked, and they were best friends from the beginning. Them separating was like separating two brothers. You always have blue in your blood. And Greg is fucking bros with Blaine. I mean, they have bro down so hard over the course of 21 days in Bonanza City, New Mexico. Yeah. I mean, every draft pick up until Blaine was kind of like, okay, weird, but whatever. (laughs) (laughs) It's like, oh, yeah, Andre's making the decision. It makes sense. Yeah. But Blaine, it was people cover their mouths and were shocked. I was, I was like shocked. But Blaine was pretty, I think Blaine was like, he's technically my friend, but it's fine. He's a chiller. He's a, he's such a chiller. But, you know, Greg, Greg wasn't really happy. But then when the green team, like, officially declares they're not doing anything all, all hell broke loose as oh, we yeah. expected as it as it should have as it should have i mean greg greg was right he's like this isn't fair i can't believe our council members didn't stand up to keep us all i can't believe mm-hmm. that she got a pat like all the stuff that these were like very fair concerns because it didn't it wasn't fair like the episode I, I wonder if any of the kids in some of the cut footage were like yelling about the producers like hey is this this isn't fair you guys can't let her do this is this legal by bonanza law (laughs) um so you know greg is really acting out he's like i'm not sleeping with the blues i'm sleeping with the yellows and like yellow's like nah dude you can't sleep in here and he's Uh, like whoa and i'm like why does he want to sleep with him like (laughs) i think they can still hang out if you're with your other color 
friends. That sounds bad. Yeah, but, literally, <laughs> literally, literally all, it, all it does is, you know, it affects the challenges, it affects your class, and it affects literally your your nighttime. But other than that, you can hang out with <laughs> it Blaine. Affects, it affects your bedtime. You can fucking pretend you're skateboarding on the piece of wood you guys found, and you put it on a barrel. And <laughs> <laughs> but Blaine is truly a woke king. He's really, like, chill. He is, like, a, he is like a stand-up boy. Um, and he's just like, hey, like, I'm going to help this little munchkin team. All good, bro. And yeah. also, the shirt matches my hair. <laughs> he says that? No. Uh, but I mean, it kind of does. He's, he's quite a golden boy. He's fucking Spicoli from Fast Times. He's Spicoli. He, he's probably doing rips of gravity bongs with like the crew he, off camera. He is truly Vans off the wall. He is Quicksilver. <laughs> he, he, but he is a down-home Florida boy. He's a Docktown and Z-boy He is. Florida. You can tell he like surfs with gators. Blaine's cool. Anyway. So... Well, there's a lot more Emily, drama. Emily's yeah. going to the Blue District and she is happy as a clam. Yes. She's Because all the Blue District girls are like, so Emily, Blue District girls work hard. And she's like, yes, ma'am. I'm going to work <laughs> hard for you guys. I love. It, she's not Kentucky dinner, right? She's different. No, she's not. She's That's Savannah. Savannah, yes. She's 10. And they're same vibes, though. Yeah. The, they kind of look alike. They have the frumpy mom kind of look that I love, that I love. Guylin is not. Oh, look, no. Gu- <laughs> this is not a good day for Guylin. I mean, there, no. let's just say this is the most drama packed episode that's kind of organic drama. Easily. These kids really are pissed off at each other. I mean, I'd be really mad because it's not fair. Like, I'm, I know I keep saying it. It's like the episode. It's, it's really not, not fair. fair. I can't believe they let Laurel get away with doing this i know it's bullshit i wonder if they restructured the episode once she decided to not they're Mm -hmm. like oh wait this actually fits in much better but but they almost accidentally see our first bonanza city manslaughter (laughs) jared 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 walks up the guy with one of those stick lollipops that you get like at the end of disneyland yeah he's got his homemade shank that he made with his own saliva and sugar (laughs) yeah it's it's been sucked down to a very sharp point yeah and he sticks it in guy face and Comes like pretty close he to stabbing. Almost shanks Guylin with a candy uh, he, that he bought for like half a buffalo nickel in the saloon. And then he even calls him, he, he threatens Guylin's life and says he is, quote, Guylin has proved himself the suckiest council leader yet. The suckiest council leader ever. And he tells him to lock his cell door tonight. <laughs> and then he goes back into the cell himself. And then he has a karate kick and kicks the cell door open. I'll give you one piece of advice lock your cell door tonight. But the red team is not happy. I, I mean, I never write it down, but Mike has a lot of screen time in this up, and he's just like, ma ma ma. Guy line shocks. I'm Mike. I'm yeah. I'm squeaky. <laughs> I'm, I, I watched too much Ace Ventura as a kid, and I had that energy. <laughs> it's too much Ace Ventura. It's too much Animaniacs. Also, even though I was an Animaniacs fan, it's someone that's like personality is rooted in the Animaniacs. His, his pro- oh my god, his classmates probably just hear him say like Jimmy Neutron quotes all day. Uh, he like eats pixie sticks. It's just like ugh, bad uh, energy. We also get a great side scream. This all also all this red drama is surrounded by Nathan because Nathan is like. I think I like the blue because change scares me. Oh, Guylin, this is the part that made me really hate Guylin this app is he's like, you guys, he's yelling to Markel. He's like, you just don't want Nathan because you hate Nathan in front of Nathan. And Markel's like, we don't hate Nathan. He just wants to be on the fucking blue team. And he's like, yeah. I really do. <laughs> so I thought that was really rude of Guylin to be like, you guys just hate him. And I'm like, I don't know. That w- even if they didn't, that would make you feel bad as a kid. Yeah, Gu- Guylin, w- when we first meet him, he was a total chiller. But lately, he has really shown himself to be a poor leader. Well, I'm spoiler alert. All the council members suck this episode. <laughs> None of them did what they should have done. None of them took leadership in it- like a good way. Zach, oh, we'll get to him. But I feel like everyone really Zach is, over is o- They're all kind of over and they're all just not being very cool. Um, so that's all stemmed from Nathan. And I guess Alex and Nathan are friends, which I never really caught. Yeah. And in, in Nathan's first and only other episode, there's a slight like friendship storyline, but just they're like kind of nerds yeah. and kind of quiet and sweet boys. Although Alex has like the mind of like a 48 year old man. They definitely both know how to like French braid their sister's hair. Let's just put it. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> but there's a great part where I mean, Alex is the best person in the whole nation. And he just yeah. Yaz- I hate this. I hate it. It's stupid. (laughs) 
He's so cute. I love like, him. I want to, he's like a Furby. I want to pick him up. He and is just a like, Furby. I love him so much. a kiss on the top of his head. I saw a good meme today. Is it smart to talk about memes on an audio platform? I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> There's a good meme today since we're still in Quar. And it said, uh, nature, Furbies have reclaimed the land. Nature, <laughs> the forests are clean. <laughs> and it had pictures of Furbies walking around and like they were <laughs> forest line. <laughs> I just like that. Uh, uh, listeners, I don't know if you know this, but Stevie herself. Oh. She, I think the reason why she brought up the memes and Furbies is because she herself yeah, was that's a exactly famous right. Furby meme. It's true. Back in the Tumblr days, I had a lot of reposts. I don't know what. T- I wasn't really a Tumblr Re-tumbles? person. But I put it on Tumblr because that's where you would get images found quickly mm. if you tagged them. It was pre-Insta, basically. And the image was of? Of me and Halloween, I think it was 2013, as a Furby. I did really good. It was a very difficult costume. If you Google Furby costume, I, it's like the fourth result right now. So do that. Google Furby costume. Uh, there's been, I've been featured on like threads of like, these Furbies will give you nightmare sauce or like, you know, shit like that. You know, you can do you, whenever you put your name in credits, you can put in parentheses BuzzFeed. Oh, shut Because up. you're on the 25 wackiest most so horrifying bad. lol costumes For, uh 69 f- furbies to make you cringe your pubes off <laughs> gold dress or black dress but and also it's like there was like fan videos made of like it being distorted and changed colors and people would come and like kill it with fire and <laughs> well, well it comes up on like f- cursed furby image accounts yeah very very so frequently. i'm kind of in the furby universe after that costume went it's a splash viral I've DM'd Furby manufacturers like at least six times and been like, hey, hook a girl up with a Furby. You, and they've never sent me one. Do you know if their Twitter is run by like a kind of youngish hip brand manager? I bet they've fired and rehired so many different social media managers. I should probably just try again. Yeah, note to self, we got to check that afterwards to see if we can get some free Furbies because we're not doing shit right now. I mean... We Come can, on. We can train like 10 of them at a time. Are oh. they selling new Furbies, I guess, is the main question. Uh, you know what? I, I looked up Furbies on eBay like about a year or two ago. And to get one that's still in box is a little exp- not Not crazy expensive, but like it'll cost you some. Yeah. Um. Anyways, Alex is a Furby. If I, get a, if I get a new Furby, I'll name it Alex in his transition. I'll get a transition lenses, the Furby. Wouldn't that be <laughs> yeah. so cute? Um. Cute. But everyone kind of does hate Nathan, let's be real. And it's because he also sings in his sleep, which oh is my God. really what? disturbing. What? He sounds like an old mannequin ghost. Back on top. Back Shut on top. up. What it, what is that? I, I it, couldn't... Sh- it sounds like a Betty Boop hymnal. <laughs> that's, that's from that's from the that's from the mind of Nathan. I don't know. It's scary. It's really haunted feeling. It was haunting. I, I thought it was going to be like I don't know what I was thinking. Like maybe more biblical, but it was more. It was scary. Or if someone sings in their sleep, don't you think they're like humming or like making more like melodic sounds? Like if I'm imagining mm. someone singing, the, yeah, like singing in their sleep, it'd be like. Oh, my baby. <laughs> like, but instead, Nathan is like, Ooh, that's sexy. Whose God is this? <laughs> Hello, my honey. Hello, my red <laughs> Nathan's scary. And that was sexy? Did you think that was sexy? What did I well, even well, say? Well, I was imagining it was a 12-year-old boy with OCD. Oh, uh, he sings this. We three kings are stealing the gold. Uh, <laughs> three kings reference, baby. <laughs> hey, we should put that on our core list. Jamie Kennedy experience, experiment. Baby. Um, so, so he sings in the sleep. Everyone hates him. Day 26. So we get a little Chiron of where we're at. So we have some time left in the nation, but yeah, we're getting, we are chugging along. I am yeah. getting a little like nostalgic, sad that it's going to end soon, but I know. we'll cross that bridge. Um, but we're no- still meeting new characters, even in day 26. <sighs> Let's stop. No new friends. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no new hunters. No, no, no. Oh, well, Hunter, honestly, Hunter's okay. Hunter is the definition of okay. So we, we meet this new kid, Hunter. He's kind of a down a, a down south good old boy from I the bayou. I can't understand anything he says. He is very mm. the water boy in terms of like <laughs> accent tree. Except the water boy is interesting. Whereas we see... You hate, we, you hate Hunter. We see Hunter give a sermon to like six bored kids and he's just like, and so God be earth is okay, forgotten son. I'm a, hunt, and, uh, I'm a Hunter advocate because... Hunter is a hashtag chilled Christian. He's not like shaming people or being mean like Olivia does. Mm -hmm. And Hunter was basically like, hey, everyone's kind of acting like a dick right now. So I'm going to lead this little sermon because on Sundays I go to church and it's just kind of my thing. And I can't believe people just throw shit into dirt piles here. And he just claims. He's he's a nice kid. And then he's like, and my dad like lost his job this last year. And he just taught me about never quitting. When he said that, I was like, well, 
Yeah, of course he talks about never quitting. He didn't quit. He got like, yeah, five, five, whatever. Know. It's fine. And he just talks about like he opened up to producers. He told his little story, and he's and you make it makes your mind go, oh, I smell a gold star. Yes, although as we later find out, the producers only talk to him to create some drama and who gets the gold star. Yeah. Here's the thing with Hunter is that growing up Jewish, my idea you of hate Christians. Christianity. I, I well, yes, I hate Christians. I killed Christ. What was I saying? Oh no, my, my, <laughs> <laughs> I was just I, I was just it. wrapped up in wanting to kill Christians. Um, no, no, no. My my perception of Christians, especially Southern Christians, is full, totally formed by TV and movies. So when I, when I imagine a Southern preacher, I'm imagining, God damn the devils, God damn the Jews, the heathen Jews. Well, I mean, Hunter, kind of chill. Hunter is a hashtag chill Christian, hipster church, we're going to hipster church. But Hunter is like the kind of person during quarantine who's staying home on Palm Sunday. You know what I mean? Like he's not he's not saying he's protected by the blood. He's, he's like... He's not inviting his... his uh, his flock to come spit in his mouth at church <laughs> Hunt, on Easter Hunter, Sunday. Hunter believes in climate change. Like, let's just put it, let's put it, well, actually, I'd be really curious to see where he's at now. He has a church YouTube channel and the most viewed video is him saying, like, we welcome LGBTQIA+. Whoa, that'd be hot. Uh, so Hunter has that. In the midst of that ceremony, Ace Ventura wannabe, a.k.a. Mike Detect, Mike Detect, <laughs> Mike, Detect- <laughs> Mike cries at church because he's full of sin and... Well, he does? Yes, you don't remember... You hate Mike. You block out Mike anytime yeah. he comes. I mean, I do too, but I pay attention for the show, for the condition. Oh so Mike cries. I guess I have to fill in Pablo quick. Uh, here. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, you guys I hang on. Out. Hang tight. I have to hang out. So Mike, I was going <laughs> to say, so Mike died. So Mike cries, and God then he's like, like, I'm a bitch. I'm a tease. I'm a goddess on my knees. I have to go <laughs> apologize. <laughs> oh, that's I have to go apologize apologized. to Nathan because Mike got saved by Hunter in a chill Christian way. And he goes and he's like, Nathan, I'm sorry. I'm mean. And Nathan's like, I want my baby. I want my dog. <laughs> and Nathan doesn't really care. He's like, oh, thank you. Okay. Yes, I remember this scene. And then it's about to be challenge time. Mm-hmm. So the blue team is congregating, just kind of talking about like, it's time to play, guys. Who's ready? Because Andre's giving his pep speech, uh, and then... About the Titanic. Look, guys, the Titanic was a whole ship. She sailed. The second she got it ripped, Dude, and shut the... up. Yeah, and Greg's like, shut up, bitch. And then <laughs> uh, Olivia's like, you look like a sad puppy dog, bitch. And they're just going to town on Andre. I know. I mean, have you seen Comedy Central's Roast Battle? Because it kind of reminded me of this, but it's a one-sided battle. Mallory's like, I'm over this, bitch. Like, everyone's oh, yeah. really not into Andre. I wonder if there's more stuff behind the scenes that we didn't see because I do feel like the distrust and kind of hatred towards Andre is widespread and kind of like... Oh, it's, it's... it's I don't know. I mean, of course, like, I think there's always splashes of racism, but I'm always... But it's been going on so long, even after some council changes, and I'm like, what has Andre done? Like, what's going on here? What's, well, the, what's the beef? Well, I mean, look, here's the thing. Andre gets incredible he's bullied so hard throughout this entire series and it's very fucked up it's sad i mean like if you're a 10 year old kid and you're getting bullied on with cameras facing you that's one thing but he's only getting the amount of bullying because he somehow won that that first re-election against olivia yeah that, that, was, well, like, that was like episode four or five i'm not pro olivia by any means but uh, yeah she's he, just also being not really great to him he and- should have been gone a while ago and i mean once you lose mallory yeah, it's I mean, over. As goes Mallory, so goes the nation. So it's challenge time. And of course, we have the f- a f- ridiculous challenge that I can't believe they're making these children do. <laughs> and they're making them haul, literally haul rocks. Karsh is there and he's like, pioneers, we got mining sleds. So they have mining sleds and they have to go through this obstacle course and they all collectively have to move a ton. And you know, kids, when they learn how much a ton is, they're like, 2,000 pounds. <laughs> I, know. I remember being shocked to my core when I found out that a ton was 2,000 pounds and not 1,000 pounds. I know. It's always two. Don't forget. It's the old trick. Um, it's 2,000 pounds. If you are using the metric system, meaning anywhere else in the world. It um, means 1.5 kilos. That's a bit of a quid. It's about six stone. It's about 9,000. <laughs> it's 9,000 Mallory. No, 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 Stevie. There was 1,000 stones. Um, whatever. <laughs> um, and so they have to move rocks. Uh, Mallory's like, it's going to take 50 me's to yeah. weigh it out. Well, 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 here's the big twist is that whoever brings the, the rocks over, you know, past the obstacle course and over the line of hay wins the challenge. And, you know, they'll accordingly rank everybody in the class. But these kids have no idea how much weight they're pulling. So they're trying to put as much rocks as possible while also 
doing enough where they can quickly cross the finish line. Right. So you could be a dick and put no rocks in your bucket and go race ahead and be first place. Yeah. And then you don't help the town. Yeah. And you, you'll, you'll still be upper class, so, but you won't have a chance of winning. So every team decides to like haul a bunch of rocks. No one's skimping. Everyone's mm-hmm. loading up their sleds. Um, but these rocks are just painted rocks. So you don't really know like the weight of them. And I think those sleds are heavy too. Those we sleds don't are talk- very heavy. Those sleds were probably a solid 50, 80 pounds. Also, I just want to give a shout out to the PA who had the spray paint fucking <laughs> a thousand pounds of worth of rocks because they're all spray painted in the colors of the teams. I wish they pulled a drop dead gorgeous and did it like eight minutes before. So all their hands were like <laughs> stained with their team colors. That's so funny. Um, So they have to move rocks and, and- it's a, it's painful to watch. Yeah, Blaine these, is killing it for the yellow team, obviously. He's their muscle. Blaine's killing it, but with teams like the red team, which is full of little skinny kids and like nothings like the Alex. Red team, the red team sucks. I mean, I was genuinely concerned that these kids were going to get like a hernia or pull a back. Ugh, baby hernia. Um, yeah, it, it was concerning. And I feel like they each had to move 500 pounds. It's a lot. Even for like a bunch of kids, it's a lot. Uh, so they they haul the rocks and they start weighing them. Um, so first up is blue team and they pulled in, they come in first and they pulled in 480 pounds of rocks. Yes. All right. Yellow team's up. They pull, they get second. They pull in 460 pounds of rocks. All right. Green is third and they pull in 420 pounds. 420. 420 green blazing. 420 pull rocks. <laughs> green district, 420 pounds. The least amount so far. Pounds of rocks. And so red, who the whole challenge has been like, we're loading up the most rocks. We're loading up the most rocks. We rock. We're loading rocks. So red is up and they need 640 pounds to win this challenge. That's yes. a shit ton of rocks. Yeah. What was it? What was the number? 600 and something? 640. 640. Insane. So wow. they got 485 pounds. <laughs> they did Which- pull the most rocks of all, but by like five pounds. So not like, it's not like yeah. they significantly yeah. brought in more. Everyone did equally... Yeah. Not bad. They all did good. It was just a hard challenge. Hey, hey, Kid Nation challenge producers, great job on your ninth fuck up in a row. Seriously. Um. So they didn't win, but Guylin had the audacity to go, y'all put less rocks so you could win the fucking first places. Yeah. And they're like, bitch, we, we put a shit ton of rocks too. And like, no, you guys just came in last. Yeah. And... You only have five pounds more, so it's not like you did much better. I know everyone came in under five hundred. So even the people who tried the hardest were nowhere close. It's just like, I just can't believe he said that because clearly everyone was sitting there loading their rocks. It's not like one team had two hundred pounds of rocks or one team had three hundred. Yeah. They all were in a in like a twenty point margin basically. Yeah. I expected there would be some pretty crazy margins, but no, it was like. You know, yeah, and like and green even. had the least amount and came in third. Yeah. So it's not like they and, even like... And it was 420, so it was like a cool number. It was cool. 69, 69. And so Sophia says something to Guyland that is bleeped out and blurred her mouth. Yeah. And I would... I'm dying. Because oh, yeah. it's, it's definitely a short sentence. And I don't know what it was. But he, she says something bleeped and blurred. And then doesn't Greg say like, hey, everybody raise your hand if you agree with what Sophia yes. said. <laughs> Everyone was like, would you agree with what she said? And I, in my Power mind, movement. what do you think it was? Or what what vein of thought do you think it was? I think he, I think she called him a pussy. And that's what I was, I was literally what I was thinking. Because I don't think she would have said anything like racist or gay slur or anything like no. that. Also, we don't know what Guy Island's race is. He looks very, maybe Hawaiian, maybe Samoan. He's disturbed. <laughs> no, not, when he said disturbed, I was like, excuse me? No, oh, like, you like mean the, chi- new, the new a, metal band. He's a child from disturbed. Yes. That's we, all we know. As, as we've established. No, not like is, his race. He's not like a disturbed. Yeah, no, no. He's Fieldy from Corn, bass player Fieldy. He's yeah. his son. He's like a Bakersfield bass player. Yeah, he's half Deftones. <laughs> he's a quarter Corn <laughs> and, and a splash of POD. And a quarter Static X. Uh, oh yes, POD. He's, he, he's a pod. He, he got his twenty three and Me test back, and it was fully POD. I am Guylon. Guylon. Maybe we should name this podcast Youth of the Nation. Oh, we are, we are. The kids of the nation. The kid nation nation. Wait, let's do it. One, two. We are, we are. The kid nation nation. No, the kid nation nation. One, two. We are, we are. The kid nation nation. There we go. Um, Nailed it. Sign me. Um, So she bleeps. And then we learn what the prize is. They didn't get a prize because they didn't pull the weight. And now they get to see the prizes they could have. 
Prize number one being beds for all. Yeah, I, I had completely forgotten that these kids have been sleeping on fucking wooden floors for 26 days. <laughs> well, I don't, I just, again, I've bitched about this plenty of times, but the things that they choose to have in Pioneer Land and not are random as fuck. Yeah. Like, I'm sure the pioneers eventually were like, even if they didn't have a bed, I'm sure they like sheared a sheep to make like a bundle of sleeping cloud you know i know they have farm animals that was established in episode two although we haven't seen an animal since that's true the animal they probably died they probably ate them all in like one day uh, prize two is the coolest kid, kid lounge, lounge ever. ever you could have won the coolest kid lounge ever and it's a huge rv kind of airstream trailer yeah. that is filled with chinese checkers and <laughs> kids love chinese checkers and juice and like sliced apples and it's yeah. just like a place for kids to just fucking go ham honestly it seemed kind of shitty because they didn't, it didn't do any seem that great they didn't do any close-ups of like oh there's playstation 2s and it like wasn't this, as cool as the block like- party no, not, not even close. And why they pull that big Airstream trailer out? I don't know. Everything doesn't make Anyways, sense. Anyways, so the kids don't get this prize. They don't get anything. Obviously, they would have chosen picked beds. the beds. I mean, the beds was just a better bet. Uh, so now we're getting a little side story. The challenge is over. And Randy, who was, if you guys forgot, she's on the yellow team. She's one of the yellow girls. And she's the one who flipped the vote for Zach. Yes. That's that, Randy. That's really the only thing of no she's aka telling. she's deep throat um so she <laughs> she changed the whole dynamic of society so she's like i want to go and it's mainly she's just like i miss my mom and my animals and i want she said something funny though she's like stuff. i want to hear my mom's opinion which i was like what does that mean she did <laughs> yes she didn't say mom's voice she no she had my opinion. opinion yeah i was like all right um she's like i just want to hear my mom and dad say that the media is against george w bush and the war Randy's chill. The surge um, is, is, is happening. So Michael from the green team, he's con- he said he's concerned for the yellow team's mental health. That Because I- Zach is outside the cabin kind of make funny, making fun of the kids who cry, which I thought was really insensitive oh, and kind of like lame. Yeah, I, I didn't get that scene. So that, that's what he was doing. He was yeah, making he was making fun, fun of, of the it. crying kids. He said, he said every day there's kids who are crying. I don't get it. Yeah, Zach takes a real big heel turn in this episode. And maybe it's like hormones or something because he he isn't acting like his normal sensitive self yeah because when we first meet him he is straight up like zach de la rocha viva la revolucion he's fun he's happy go lucky hey maybe the new upgrade in leadership is taking a toll on his mental health yeah he's probably like i just remember i want to go back to being a kid yeah um and then sophia does go to guyland pretty quickly and we have an apology scene and she's like Hey, I like the way she, I like what she said. She's like, I would not be happy if someone said that to me, and that was really fucked up of me, and I'm sorry. Yeah. And Guylan's like, it's all good, girl. Yeah, pretty standard stuff. It was pretty like, all right, this works. Um, and then Blaine is also like, Blaine is really just a shining star. He is teaching the yellow team to get the fuck up. He's like, I'm tired of the yellow team being considered lazy. Blaine is holding this team accountable, and you know what? Mm-hmm. People listen to Blaine. They hear him, and they're like, yes, sir, right away, sir. I mean, have you seen those dreamy eyes and I know. He, blonde hair? I mean, how can you say no to Blaine? You can't say no to Blaine. His name's Blaine. His name's Blaine. Uh, <laughs> if your name's Blaine, you can only be a surfer dude or like an 80s villain. And then we get a little check-in with the blue team, and uh, the blue people are like, Emily, how are you like in blue? And she's like, blue rock. Blue rock. And I love you blue. I love the blue. I love the blue. Um, so Emily's happy. And she's like doing dishes and doing stuff. And she's just like living in it. She's living the good life. She's living the blue life. Sure, baby. Blue. Uh, and then, you know, Randy's still kind of freaking out. Greg has always kind of. He's proven his spot as like the person that comes and calms down the baby kids. And he's mm-hmm. like, hey, it's all good. He carried Randy to bed and put her in. He's like, I know it made me feel better as a kid to be carried to bed. And I was like, that's cute. I mean, Greg is annoying, but he like he's annoying, but he has a good heart. He, d- he does have a good heart, even though he can be a bully at times. But one thing you brought up, he does love carrying kids. <laughs> he, he carries probably like, over the course of the episode, like 1.7 kids a- an episode. Yeah, he's just he's got big brother energy. What can you do? True. He likes to yeah. be like that solid older brother. Like and an older brother sometimes can be a little mean. They can be a little mean, but at the end of the day, they're going to like, they're going to whoop your enemy's ass for you. That's yeah. my brother. Don't you talk <laughs> to him that way? Yeah. Um, but, but so it's time to vote. Well, it's time to nominate. Yeah. Two parts. Also, here's my other critique council. If you're like, oh, we're all about nomination, you got to tell us. How about when you found out it was time to split up the districts? What if you went to the fucking town council and went, who's happy in their district? Or who wants to switch districts? And then you get a vote. And they're like, you know what? Because Emily would have been like, I'm ready to dip. 
And like mm-hmm. Nathan would have not raised his hand and like other people would have like said, if I'm, I'm open to switching teams, I mean, obviously Blaine wouldn't have, so they could have made a harsh decision without him raising his hand, obviously. But I think that would have been a smarter, more interesting way to do it. So I'm a little surprised. I don't know. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just fucking over the council. It's you're, not fair. You're a much better producer than the Kid Nation producers. Well, thank you, baby. Um, so it's time to nominate. And oh boy, it's just pretty much uh, Blaine, Hunter, Hunter, Blaine, 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 Hunter, Hunter. It's just a huge nomination fest for these uh, two boys. Uh, also, I bet you the way they edited it is that like only four people out of 40 said they want Hunter. And it was like for the six people at a sermon. It's true. I forget there's truly 40 children and we only hear the opinion about like 12 per episode. <laughs> yeah. And and this is, we Blaine mentions earlier in the episode during the challenge, he, he says some something to the likes of like, I'm finally out of Greg's sh- uh, shadow. Uh, which yeah, is true he, because Greg always got the credit when the big kids did something. And Blaine's like, we, you know, I think everyone knows that Blaine is a chill dude apart from Greg and just a more likable guy to be around, but with the, the energy and stamina of a Greg. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's also a big boy. So it's time for the town hall meeting. And oh boy, it's been a sparking episode so far. And this town hall yeah. meeting is not growing great. Greg is going off. He's just like, you're weak. You're a bitch. Andre, you're a fucking pussy because you're not even half the man Mallory is. <laughs> Mallory is 40 pounds. You'd have to weigh 50 of her to get to a, <laughs> to get to a ton. And then yeah, he's Laurel, her. And, and he's like, Laurel's good because she stood up. And then Laurel starts clapping for herself and then yells to her team, clap. She pulls a Jeb Bush. Couldn't believe it. But, but whereas Jeb Bush was pathetic in saying, please clap, she says it as like a Mussolini. Very like, Trumpy. Clap now, clap. Clap. Because she, she said it's just like that clap, clap. because greg was Aren't like you clapping because greg was like laurel is holding it down and she was like yes i am why isn't my team applauding what greg is saying about me and it was it was not everyone was being such a dick at this council meeting uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely it was not fun and, and poor Andre. earlier in the episode when he pulls the car when he leads his team to becoming upper class but realizes he has less stones he even goes like Oh, what, what, what does he say? I have the quote. He says, I feel stupid now, which is like, dude, you're the leader. Ugh. You can't be like giving out this kind of like leaderless energy. I know. he. It's leaderless energy. Beta, it's yeah. leaderless energy. And so now it's time to say like, hey, who wants to get the fuck out of this shit show? <laughs> Karsh says this. And Randy, vote flipper, deep throat, was like, <laughs> I need to go. And as soon as she raised her hand... A crack of thunder fills the room and a storm is brewing over Bonanza City and all the kids go, wow. Yeah, but but I mean, look, kids, she wants to hear her mom's opinions. Let her go. And so crack of thunder, it's tr- it is kind of qu- qu- like wild that that happened in that exact moment. And then Kelsey, our favorite... Our favorite loud mouth is like, that's God saying don't go. And I was like, <laughs> hard agree. I think she should stay. Uh, but Randy's like, I just want to go. And... Everyone lost it for Randy. Everyone's breaking into tears. It mm-hmm. is like, oh, there's not a dry eye in the house. Mm-hmm. And Cars is like, I know we all love Randy, but <laughs> bye, Randy. And then she just <laughs> leaves. Um, so now it's time for the gold star. And it's a real question. Hunter or Blaine? Who yeah. will it be? Not so much as a question. It was pretty it was pretty obvious. Blaine is the winner. Yay. Just like his golden hair and his golden shirt, he gets the golden star. Blaine rules. Blaine rules. Everyone loves Blaine. And he has the best counsel acceptance speech. He goes, Counsel, I love you. Thank you so much. I want to thank my agent for always <laughs> being there for me. Um, Florida State, go gators. <laughs> Seminoles. Um, I don't know. Um, so now he won the star and now Karsh is like so, seems like y'all are pissed off babies. <laughs> Does anyone feel good about what the council's doing? And the only person to raise their hand is Blaine, because he just won the star. And he's like, yeah, the council's great. They, they gave me $20,000. I'm fucking golden, dude. They did good. Um, and no one else raised their hand. So, Cars is like, is it fair to say y'all mad? And they're like, yeah, safe to say. None of us <laughs> like what's going on here. Oh, and this is the part I forgot. After Laurel did her little clap thing, Sophia does stand up and say, I do think it's kind of selfish of you, Laurel, that yeah. you didn't kind of play fair with everybody else and traded someone. I think Green could have accepted someone on the team. And and after her, Michael then goes and says something else, challenging her power. Yeah, because so, they were just like, well, it's cool that you think the Green... And Laurel was also... Uh, Laurel was really... She's like, we're the best. Why would I split up the Green team? And I was like, that's not what you should be saying. You should say, I didn't 
can't. as a leader find a reason to switch my team. Yeah, they came in fucking third and fourth place like six episodes in yeah, a row. Yeah, they're constantly losing, so maybe they should switch it up into some into some like. So it's time to go, and it's election time. And I don't remember if we did it this way last election, but he was like, "So who wants to run?" And he's like, "Red team," and we get a hand raise from DK, DK. which I'm like, "Okay, yeah, yeah, solid contender." Red, Red definitely needs new leadership. Gylan came in very hot, but oof. He is. Hey, sometimes up. you need that person that just like switches it up and then then you need someone that can sustain the new power. I mean, anything was better than Mike at that time. Ugh, don't even remind me of the Mike regime. Uh, <laughs> the uh, Mike administration. <laughs> <laughs> and then Yellow Team, who wants to lead? And then Blaine yes. raises his hand. And, I mean, he's like, hey, I've been doing good. And and Zach literally goes, oh, cra- or crap or, or something. He doesn't say, oh, shit, but he's like, oh, no. Yeah. And then he knows he's fucked. Well, and then on the blue team, who wants to run for council? Greg raises his hand, and that's when Andre's like, "Oh fuck!" Yeah, he's fucked. I mean, Greg didn't want to run the first time because he was still kind of like, eh, "Whatever, this doesn't matter." But now that Andre, well, is now that all the big up, boys are running, um, and then yeah. who wants to challenge Laurel? Out of nowhere, moppy-headed Muppet, Michael. Michael. Cool guy, Michael. Cool guy, Michael. Grungy little boy from Washington State, and Laurel. Laurel's cold eyes just go, well, I guess that's what it is. Like, and she's just like, all right. Like, like, but she's not happy, yeah. obviously. She's like, time to sing. Uh, time to sing. Amazing Grace. Yeah. Wait, what was the other song we just sang? It was like five whole minutes ago. Or maybe 20. We are, we yeah. are. The, the kids of the nation. No, kids of the nation. <laughs> baby, one, two. All right, all right. Well, here, let, let, let's give our gold stars of the week. And, and then, then we'll let's, sing we'll, it out. We'll sing it out. Okay, okay, fine. So, who, okay, who are you going to give a go- Who is your gold star child in the Kid Nation Nation? Well, I've given this a lot of thought. And by a lot of thought, I mean, like, I literally started thinking about it three seconds ago. <laughs> but I think I'll give it to, hey, my favorite kid, Jared. He what? almost he, he, he almost shoved a candy stick into another child's eye. Great energy this episode. As always, pointing out the... I think Jared of the town. is a touch violent. He, I didn't like when he kicked over that stand, and I didn't like him threatening Guy Island. You, you know what it is? I just started uh, watching Deadwood this week, which has very strong uh, Bonanza City vibes because it takes place entirely in I mean, an old pioneer town. It's grown up Kid Nation. <laughs> it is. It's Kid Nation, but they're saying like cunt and cocksucker a lot more. Oh, and so Jared is kind of like the Ian Machine. McShane character, Al Swearingen. He owns the the gem, the saloon in town, and he rules the town with an iron fist. Mm, and so he's not and he's Jewish. Got it. Um, well, not Deadwood Nation. Cool. Who's so yours? for all the dead uh Deadwood I, I'm a deadhead, hey. <laughs> <laughs> you are a multiple deadhead. My gold star goes to Blaine. He really killed it this episode. He's great. Much deserved. Usually the gold stars, I'm kinda like, ah, oh, that was like a pity gold star. That was kind of random. Or it will just kind of be given to a random, like, mediocre white person. But Blaine is an exceptional white person. Well, Blaine and- <laughs> is probably the best white person I've ever met. Sorry, babe, you're number two. Jesus. Um, I don't know. I think Blaine just really shines as, like, a good example for the town. He does the work. You know, he's just, like, a good kid. I liked Blaine, and I really... We've seen him all season, and this is the first time we've heard him talk. Really, this was this episode. Pretty and much, he kinda, yeah. And he came from nowhere. He was like the person that lost his girl group band and became like the solo star. Blaine <laughs> is hot right now. Everyone loves Blaine. Blaine, <laughs> Blaine rules. All right. Well, that was another episode of Kid Nation Nation. I'm scared. I don't want it to end. Baby, we got four more episodes to go, and maybe some even some some, some fun stuff, stuff after that. Some, All right, some specials. fine. But let's uh let's Will sing, sing let's me? sing them out the way we always do with a rendition of Pod's Kids of the Nation. I'll get it right. Oh, don't wait, worry. Okay. One, two, two. We are we. Are we. <laughs> okay. Right. One, two. two. We, uh, I, I, I've never heard the countdown that you're doing. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? I don't know. One, two, two. one, two. What, what is that? I've, I've never. Been, okay. Can we do three, three, two, one? Three, two, one. We are, oh, we are the Kid Nation Nation. Okay. Bye. bye.